I've been away for a while. I haven't been feeling too well. Various ailments have plagued my body. However, I'm well again and almost back to normal. But I'm choosing to take things easy so I don't fall ill again. I've decided to work on a chapter today and clean out my pen nibs. I thought I'd answer a question that's come up quite a bit. Why I choose to live alone. To a lot of people watching this channel, my isolation, my choosing to live alone might seem odd at times. Yet to me, it's the most natural thing in the world. Now, culturally, living alone would be seen as rather strange in most African communities. We stay home till we get married, and once married, we'll leave the family home. However, I'm traveling in Europe at the moment. It's much smaller where I am. The houses are smaller, we're all in flats and the streets are narrower. There isn't as much space. So compared to living at home with my family, where I'd normally have lots of space and lots of silence, this is a big change to me. So out here, I prefer to live alone, inviting peaceful friends into my space. Sometimes, choosing to share a space with another is like letting the devil in. It brings all sorts of chaos. Those with more turbulent souls upset the balance, and the peace and sanctitude of the space is forever lost. I've always lived my life in a certain way. I've always chosen to live quietly, and if I wanted to socialise, then I'd head out into the carnage. But at the end of the day, I've always wanted to retreat and return to my silence. Silence is very important to me. I think a lot of people equate it with complete silence. Not seeing anyone, no speech, as though I live my life like a monk. However, silence to me is not just about noise. It's about internal noise. It's about energy. It's about people who don't know how to use a calmer way of speaking. People who can't feel that you are trying to think, or you are tired, or you are going through an inspirational phase. And I'm not surprised. So many are yet to learn to be quiet. I've met people who don't like being lonely for too long, or being alone for too long, because all they're surrounded by is silence. The silence terrifies them. Yet, for people like me, we find the silence invigorating. We find the silence inspiring, as it gives us ideas, creative ideas, that we can either put onto paper or canvas. It's a creative outlet because it helps us think and come up with all sorts of wonderful, wonderful and slightly out of this world ideas. As this channel continues to grow, I find more and more people who are like me. They sort of understand the plight, and I'm never ashamed for spending so much time on my own, with books and paperwork, in the woods with my dogs. To them, that's almost a normal existence, and I'm grateful for that. As I socialize and as I meet people, I meet people who want to be part of my life, they're curious, they ask questions, they want to know. Sometimes, they even have romantic intentions. Yet, I can be very closed off. I'm aware of this. And I'm having to learn how to share my work and talk about my work with people. I never really discuss my writing with people in the flesh. They don't tend to understand most of it. A lot of them don't read. For them writing, particularly by hand, and writing hundreds of thousands of words, is such a monumental task. But for me, it's just a part of everyday living. It's something I need to do. Many others have other ways of dealing with that creativity outlet, and that's fine. We all have our own thing. I would also like to point out that the more time we spend with chaotic people, the more we see the turbulence in their lives, the indecisions, 
the romantic entanglements that lead to anxiety and depression and other ailments of the mind. The loss of self. The more I see this, the more I realize sometimes it's better to spend time on your own and build and grow as a person and create your fantasy world of characters and mystery and wonder. And then perhaps one day, this is not a wish, but if it happens, then someone will come in. Someone who is peaceful and shares the same energy will come into your life one day. Hopefully they will know how to read a situation. They will not be chaotic, but be calm and add to your peace rather than taking away from it. That is what I wish for all of us. A peaceful existence. A peaceful life like I had when I was a child. My childhood was very quiet, with the opportunity to speak to other children and adults when I wished to. However, when I wanted to retire, there was always that opportunity too, to withdraw from the world and go into my own world. I'm very aware that not many have that. From a young age, their lives have been noisy. They don't know what silence is. They don't know what peace of mind is. They confuse being alone for loneliness. The silence scares them, perhaps because they turn inwards. They hear a lot of things that they shouldn't, or perhaps think about. And unless they find peace, that silence will always be damaging. It will always haunt them. But there are those of us who find peace in the silence. And until I can find someone who is able to be alone and find peace within themselves, in this land, peace in their surroundings, peace within their minds, then it's best to be alone.